Big Z Reviews. Dune, part two, is a sequel to one of the best films that came out a couple years ago. And it's also the second half of the adaptation of one of the best science fiction books ever read. And this is a return to epic filmmaking that I really haven't seen that much lately. You know, it's an amazing film. You've been fighting the Harkonnens for decades. Look! My family's been fighting them for centuries. Your blood comes from dukes and great houses. Here, we're equal. What we do, we do for the benefit of all. So for a little bit of a reference, um, I'm more of a, like, a fantasy novel fan, but I, I've had times when I've read a lot of science fiction, and I read the first, I think, I, I, think I tapped out either, either after book five or book six of Dune when I was younger, and then later I reread the first three books, but it's been, it's been a while since I last read them, so, like, and then, so I wouldn't say that the Dune world is precious to me. And I, so I'm, um, so like, I don't mind when Denis Villeneuve, when he like changes things about the book to make a better movie. I'm not one of those guys that will be offended by the changes. Because I'm sure if you're, if this is your favorite book and you know every little thing about it, you may not like some of the things that this movie does. In the same way that even though the Lord of the Rings trilogy is some of the best movies ever made, if you're a huge fan of the books, you might be really annoyed at what they changed. But this movie, like, if you, if you have an IMAX anywhere near you, you really have to go see it in an IMAX, the biggest screen possible. Like, for me, I traveled, like, a four-hour round trip to see um, to see this in my nearest AMC IMAX, like there's one Regal IMAX that's slightly closer to me, but like I have um, I'm an AMC um, A list member, so I got essentially it's completely free. Well, that that's for the monthly payment, and it was well worth it because it is the most epic movie I've seen in years, and it was just enthralling. Like, it was just watch it, and, and it was just it's such an amazing experience. Although I will say that um, because so much of the movie is, like, the pure, like, white-yellow desert, that if your movie theater, if it has the, the screen or the projector has any smudges or any damage, like, it, it will be noticeable. But I couldn't help, when I was watching, I was like, there is a streak... On like the left corner, like my eye kept catching it. So this this movie will out if a movie theater has a shitty screen. But I mean, this everything about it is so perfect. I will say though that if you weren't a fan of the first movie, you might not be a fan of this movie still. Like this is another you know almost three hour movie, and there's a little bit more action. But there's still, the pacing is a little on the slower side. And again, there's not as much of a cliffhanger. It's funny, when I rewatched the first one at home, still an amazing film. Although it's really disappointing, I watched it on my new TV in the 4K Blu-ray. But they um, didn't include any of the IMAX uh, ratio. So it's kind of disappointing, it's not as engrossing as it should have been. It's really disappointing that so many 4K Blu-rays don't include like, some of the different multiple aspects when they're, like, showed in that, you know, on the, on the IMAX. It's really disappointing when there's just a regular, this straight format. Like, it doesn't change when the bigger scenes or anything. I hate when they, do, they don't, like, make the best, um, you know, f option that they have. But, um, if, like, if you didn't like the first one, you might not like this one. Because, I mean, it's, the pacing is, is not very fast. And again, like I said, even though this has an end, it's still book one of a series. So there's definitely a lot that happens after this film that we're going to have to wait 
um, you know, three years till we see the next one, till we see uh, the Dune Messiah. Like, and I think that, you know, um, Denis Villeneuve, he really wants to make it, but I'm not sure he might take a break and do a different film first. And, but I don't know, I think that the studio will really want to make the, the new one, next one now, but he might wait a year. So, but it's, so you like, you definitely have not finished his story, but I do absolutely love that in a lot of the interviews he's done, Denis has talked about how, you know, the, the first book, Dune, you know, Frank Herbert is kind of a douchebag at times. And I mean, rightly so in some ways. Like, I know when he said, uh, when Star Wars came out, he was, uh, he was interviewed saying, I'm going to have to try really hard not to sue George Lucas. Because he's pretty much stole the entire story and the setting and the magic and everything from Dune. But I mean, it made an amazing series. But um, he's also, he felt that, you know, he, he this is, this was made, you know, after World War II in the middle of the Cold War. And, you know, that there is, it was kind of like Tim, uh, Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides. He is the young space Hitler. And it's like, you know, maybe he has, like, he has more, like, he's, he has a reason to be space Hitler. But, I mean, in, in uh, I'm not going to tr- spoil too much, but, like, in Dune Messiah, you know, uh, Paul Trades and Stilgar are kind of talking about, hey, you ever hear about this Hitler guy, you know, back in the couple thousand years ago? He was pretty cool. I think you're, I'm, I want to kind of like him. It's like, it's, you know, it's. It's a cautionary tale. Like, it's like, you know, he has a reason to be in this whole prophecy thing is like, he doesn't want to do it. But I, but I love that, you know, Denis adapted it so well. But Herbert, he didn't like how people took this first book. You know, they viewed uh, Paul Atreides, uh, Muadib, uh, Lisan al Gaib, they viewed him as a hero. And Herbert never intended him as a hero. Like, but I mean, at the same time, when you have your main viewpoint character and you're with him through this giant book and you don't expect people to feel for him and want to root for him to win. But like, I, I love how Denis tackled this. Like, he brought in aspects of Dune Messiah where, like, he, you see that when uh, Timothy Chalamet, like, he he see the beginnings of him wanting to start a holy war. And that's never a good thing, you know? But I think that, like, how, how they did it was so well, because, like, it, you feel like if if uh, if, if the, the Harkonnens, t- like, did things differently, that uh, Paul might have just been happy, like, living with Chani and the Fremen and you know, doing their terrorism. But other than that, like... You know, that he wouldn't have become, you know, the Lisan al Gaib, you know, the the Messiah, the the space Hitler. But like he, he's kind of forced into it. But they I love how they how they how he tackles that aspect of him when like he he sees that he's he decides that okay, I'm gonna do this and billions might die, but fuck it, I'm doing it. And, you know, it's horrible, but I love it. And, I mean, Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet are perfect in their roles. I love that, you know, Zendaya gets a lot more of a of a role to play in this film, and she does it perfectly. And I love that, you know, this, if Denis made, it was, it's his funniest interviews where he's, like, talking about how, like, um, some movies have, have become too much, like, TV and too much dialogue, and people were kind of bashing about it. But, like, at the same time, yeah, movies are a visual medium, and Denis is able to tell so much of a story just with a look between the three different characters. And you see the look, like one person looking at what person's doing, another person looking at what another person was looking at that person doing and noticing that, oh, and that means this and that. You know, it's like, it's like setting up so, like, you don't even have to say anything. A different movie could be like, how could you do that? And you just see her face, like, her heartbreak in her face. And it's so perfect. And Rebecca Ferguson as Jessica, she, oh, 
Like, she is Rebecca, Rebecca Ferguson is establishing herself as one of the best uh, female leading ladies that the Hollywood has. Especially, she's insane in all of her interviews and really funny and really absurd. But, I mean, she's perfect in this role as a, a Bene Gesserit where, like, she she says that, okay, if, if I'm going to, if I want my family to win out, if I want my freaky baby daughter that's growing in my belly to have a life and my son to be the, the Lisa Al Gaib, like, I'm going to have to brainwash the entire um, populace of Arrakis, of Dune, and convince them all that my son is their prophet. And she is going to have to go to extreme lengths to do it. And it's, she's so good in that role. But it's, and I love to that, you know, there's... In the book, like, then, if you're... There's a lot of things that are changed. But in, in, in the book, like, this time frame of this movie is, like, three years or something like that. So the baby is born. And you have this freaky, um, psychic... Of uh, fortune telling little blue eyed baby running around, I, and the, and the, they don't do that. So, in, but instead, they have this whole thing where she's talking to her her fetus you know, after she's ex, after they're both exposed to the water of life, and so that like it's really creepy. Like you see that like these visuals inside her belly of the baby like. Like growing, but talking to the mother, and it's really, it's really, really freaky. But so they got the freaky little baby, but they, this is a freaky little fetus instead of a freaky little girl. And, and it's everyone. I love it's Stilgar. It's Javier Bardem is also amazing because he is like the only like a comic relief in the film. But I, I, I kind of it's, it's he, he there's multi, like a lot is laughing like. A lot of people in my theater were, were laughing really loudly at his scene because, like, he is a true believer. And, like, his reaction with, like, Timothy, like, Paul Trades, he doesn't want to be the prophet, you know, for most of the film. So, uh, he, but he's like, you know, I'm, I'm not the Lisan al Gaib, you know, and like, oh, and then him and uh, um, Stilgar with his other Fremen believers are like, oh, he is. He is that as just as it's written, you know. He is, uh, oh, he is. He is so. He doesn't want to, us to worship him. He's, he's, he's such a good man. He's, you know, it's, 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 it's so. It's funny, but it's also interesting of how tackle how that religious zealots can like view like living prophets. Like there's there's just so much inter- interesting things to talk about here. And I, I and uh, you know Austin Butler as Fade Ruasa, Ru- like he is the alternative to Paul Atreides. Like he is what the leaders of the Bene Gesserit. He is who they're planning to potentially be the um, the, the 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 profited being that will bring out the Kwisatz Haderach. Like he is he is what they they have planned, and that that who um, Jessica screwed up by giving birth to a son instead of a, a, a girl, which would be, which would marry Fade Rausa. So that, like, they, you know, she screwed up their plans, but they're still going to try to use him. And he is this brutal. Like, I love his mannerisms and his freaky harem of cannibalistic women. And the kids, like, the, the black and white scenes, like, under the Harkonnen black sun... I love how they establish that, like, even though there aren't really aliens, like, you know, other than the giant worms, they're that each house, each um, of the houses, when they settled on different planets after Earth, like, they each kind of evolved. They have a different level of human adaptation and evolution and civilization for, from each of the great houses. And it's like the the Harkonnens are insane with living under their black sun and how they filmed it is badass. I I can't wait to see that again. It's it's so interesting, and like like everyone is so perfect. Like even you get little bits of Florence Pugh as Princess Arulin, 
And, like, she's kind of set up that she, like, uh, she'll have a bigger role in the next one. They also have another character, like, the the future vision of of his sister. And then, uh, it's like, and then there's Christopher Walken as the Emperor. And, you know, Dave Bautista as the, uh, the Beast Raban. Like, he is, like, so strong, but also so much of a pussy. Like, when he's, like, it's, it's such an interesting character. Like, every every character, like, the way they portray him feels like... There's so much more than we see on the screen. And, you know, and it's so interesting because, like, in the book, when you're in Paul Atreides' mind, you kind of get to see so much more about this world and what he's thinking. And the whole idea that he is a Mentat, and he is also a Bene Gesserit, that he is an abomination, that he has been trained in both the male and the female, like, futuristic powers. Like, and and the, I love that, you know, in... I think it was Isaac Asimov that ha- had the whole concept where um, science of a significantly advanced civilization would look like magic to to a, to a, a lower being, and that and the way that like a lot in the book a lot of it is science fiction, it's hard sci-fi, but then in the movie, like he doesn't have time to explain every little thing about this because the movies are already the book was split into two three hour movies, and I know he's talked about there was lots of great scenes that were cut, although I I, I hate have like he doesn't want to do a director's cut or like deleted scenes. He said that they're gone. They're, when I cut them, they're gone, and I hate that. But that, I know there's like there's images from them, but I think we get we're never gonna see from both movies. It's kind of sad, but um. You know, the, the, the idea that it, it, for us, we are a lesser being than all of these people in this movie. So when a Bene Gesserit uses a voice or, or and Paul Atreides has visions of the potential futures, it looks almost like magic to us. And I, I kind of love that because it, it would be magic for us because we have no, we wouldn't know how to, how to do these things. But it is science fiction and it's such an interesting way to tackle sci-fi by making it almost like magic and it, it, they he, it, everything about it is so, so perfect and i i absolutely loved it and i can't wait to see it again you know it's i, I probably won't drive in the, <laughs> another 4 hour round trip so i'll maybe go see it at my home theater that will be nowhere near as good but it'll still be a good time and I would just highly recommend it. I think I'd probably give it like a 10 out of 10. Like it's everything you would want out of a movie like this. And I, I hope they do a, the Dune Messiah. And I hope they don't have to wait too long for it. But as a bonus, I'm going to do a little mini review of the Dune Bucket. And uh, when I went there, they had they had a de- like I went, I, w- I went there on the opening night, Thursday night. And they had a decent amount of them left, so I don't know how much they're going to go, like hey, how how many people are buying them, but I find them hilarious. Although, at the same time, if you have large hands, this is impossible to use. It's like, I have relatively large hands. I have sausage fingers. I don't have long fingers, but I have a big palm. And I literally can't, like, I can, I, that's all I can get my hand in right there. That's it. That's it. And if you're eating popcorn... That means you have to go like this and grab a little bit of popcorn. <laughs> and that's all, that's all you can eat. But I found that uh, one good thing is that it, when you're carrying it to the theater, it doesn't come out. Like you, you can hold it upside down and the popcorn won't come out. But the thing is, if you use it, the only way you do it is you got to like tickle it. You have to tickle the worm and the popcorn will, will come out. And you go, whoop! Like, it, like, it's like that's... Or you have to take off the top. That's all. They just, and it's just like, like they when they got it, they said, um, "Would you like to put the the popcorn in in the tin, or do you want to carry it separately?" They're like, well, you gotta put the, put it in the tin, you know. What's the point of seeing Dune and having buying the popcorn bucket if you're not gonna eat out of the popcorn bucket while you're watching Dune? But it's honestly, it's really cool, and it, I mean, but it's it's insane. And it's like, you, you cannot use it if you have a large hand. But I, I love it. And just as much as I love the movie. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's something. It's definitely something. 10 out of 10 to the, this guy, too. 
But uh, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of me, you can subscribe down below. Thanks. Thank you.